welcome to tonight's watch party for Pacific Heights. As always, I'm Andrew and I'm joined by Dom. Welcome, Dom. Hello, everybody. Cool. Okay. So, everybody, tonight's sync point will be approximately six seconds into the copy we've got. So, you'll see the Morgan Creek logo fully formed on the screen. That's where we're going to wait to start. Let's do a roll call and then we'll get into this film. So, I can see we're joined on YouTube by Ms. Swift, Halifino, and James Hellier. James's quote of the night is Good evening, everybody. <laughs> I hope you're all ready for a night spent sympathizing with that most maligned group, landlords. Mm. I can see we're joined. <laughs> By some amazing <laughs> friends over on Discord, as always. We've got Alex Peacock, Sharon, Ms. Swift's also there, uh, Mr. Furzel, Mad Matt, uh, Calbot, uh, Brainwire, Eric, and there we go. Okay, everybody. So, I'll let everyone get queued up and give them just a minute. Dom, you've never seen this before, have you? Never even heard of it. This is like the first That's instance it. of uh, interaction I've had with this movie. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, let's have a. Th so, if you've seen this film before, put one in the chat. If you've not, put two in the chat. We'll see how many people have seen it. Well, when did you first see this film? Then I saw it when it first came out on satellite television. Oh, no, what, was it straight no, to satellite? I didn't. No, I didn't. Oh, oh. I had it from our, friend, our hero. Yeah, our hero, the man <laughs> with the car boot videos. I had it from him. So I remember the case, the video case got me uh, interested in it. I imagine they were all printed out like uh, covers, like on no, no, printer no, they paper. Were all, they were, no, they were all legitimate videos. They weren't pirate videos. But oh. they all said, not for rental, retail copy on them. Ah, yes. <laughs> he didn't worry about distribution rights. Yeah. What are I going to do, sue him? Exactly, exactly. Right, so let's hit the countdown timer and get this show on the road. So here we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. So an interesting Oof. bit of trivia for this film. The role of the main bad guy in the film uh, it's called Carter played by Michael Keaton uh, originally Carter Hayes uh, Christopher Reeve wanted the role of Superman fame he petitioned the director for the role so you had Superman trying to get a role that ultimately went to Batman This soundtrack is weird. It's a very interesting soundtrack. I don't hate it. It's like yeah, hillbilly chase music, but not quite yeah, Dukes you'll of Hazard. <laughs> you'll find out why this bit is. There's a lot to this. Hans Zimmer, I believe, this soundtrack as well. Yeah, really? Keaton, yeah, James is saying Michael Keaton wanted uh, it to give him a contrast for his last big film, Batman. There we go. Is the volume for Andrew and Mike? Oh, let's have a look. There you go. Am I or am quiet? I a bit too high? Am I too quiet? I let's have a look. Does my mic seem quiet today? I did yeah, they're, admittedly they're also... have to turn you up. Right, yeah, I've got a problem. Let me just switch over. Hang on, let me try this. Right, is that better? Oh. Is that Speak better? Speak again? Hello? Yes. All right, I've got a problem with my little lav mic falling apart. Let me clip the uh, wireless lav on my shirt here. There we go. Okay, can you hear me all right now, guys? Hello? Yes, people are saying that's better. Yep, yeah. okay, thank you. There we go. Turned. I'll get that uh, swapped out. Yeah. Music by Hans Zimmer. Yeah. There we go. Wow. <laughs> There's something about those little model villages and things that's kind of creepy yet cool. I think Beetlejuice has a lot to answer for for that. Like, you just imagine this demonic creature is going to erupt oh, from it. Oh, that ice is going to be all sticky. 
Beverly D'Angelo, the mum from National Lampoons. I can't imagine that's no. great. I mean, yeah, no. nothing about... Uh... No. <laughs> no. Exactly, Mr. Ozzel says, someone call Clark. <laughs> He's off having it off with the uh, yeah, the lass exactly. from Watch McCall. Saying, I'm Batman. Oh no, they're living the ghetto life, the crack life, as I call it. Just a mattress on the floor. Mm. Oh. That's like being beaten up in a dentist's office in the nineties. I oh, know. This is the saddest apartment I've ever seen. Well, it's not. It's like a mansion. But it's so, well, yeah, it is a mansion, but it's, like, yes. depressing. There's nothing there. No personality. Yeah, There's a TV, a mattress. You find out. More stuff you find out, and you might find you might have been justified receiving that beating. Uh, Mr. Versal, you'll find out why. Mr. Versal's saying, isn't there usually a robbery, or at least an ultimatum after a beating like that? It's more for what he's done. Hmm. It's also worth noting that this film was inspired kind of by a true story. That is interesting. Because I've, I've heard Not the based, gist of this film. Inspired, yeah. Mm. Liberally inspired by. Exactly, James. The scriptwriter based this on his own experience as a landlord. That's horrifying. There is something lovely about San Francisco. I've never been there. But I'd like to go at some point. San Francisco was way better in like the eighties, nineties. Uh, more more it's, drugs, um, more violence. More, more drugs, more violence. Yeah, it was, it was truly the place oh. to be. Oh, and we've got a legend there: British acting royalty. If you've never seen interviews with her, uh, especially on the Graham Norton show, have a look on YouTube afterwards. Um, that's Miriam uh, Margulies, British royalty. Oh yes. See, Sharon confirms it was better in the 80s. Yeah. James is saying she's a Nazi. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, if it's, is that political Nazi or... I don't know. That's, I'm not... Yeah. I've got an air conditioning unit and a piano. The only things you need. Oh no. No, I'm not getting into it. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Stood. Okay. <laughs> well, James, we'll keep the politics off that, but she's got some interesting stuff in her life. Mm. Self-employed isn't pompous. Ah. Matthew Modine. Hmm. He never really was the full A-lister he wanted to be. No, he's just like kind of that guy. Oh, these are pretentious hipster douchebags. The proto-hipster douchebag. It's, it, I mean, it's San Francisco. Yeah. These people are a dime a dozen. Okay, Hans Zimmer, what happened to you? Your Why? your score is so interesting here, and yes. every one of your scores kind of sound the same now. <laughs> yes. Ah, James Singer's unhappy production for Matthew Modine. Apparently, Keaton was a prima donna. Wow. 
I believe it, but it's Batman. What do you expect? Yeah. I mean, he was literally the star of the biggest film of the past couple yeah. of years. Yeah. Okay, who in the chat has wanted to do this uh, with a significant other or just alone? Just be become a house flipper, essentially. Go and find this no. derelict place, build it up from scratch, and make it a place worth living in. No, because every time ever I take on any kind of project, even a small project, it turns to hell and drags into something unnecessary. <laughs> If it's something that sits directly outside my skill set, if it's not computer related or something like that, mm. it will turn into some hellacious over the top thing. Like I had a, sh I bought a, I bought a shed for the garden, a plastic, sh a plastic shed you can put together apparently in three hours. Uh -huh. it took me, it took me two weeks after I gave up on putting the roof on it for a fortnight because it was so difficult. So it looks like Ms. Swift is the only one who has the slight inclination to do it. Everyone else is like, dumb, you're an idiot. Shut up. Don't bother. <laughs> like, it's a yeah. mess. <laughs> yeah. Sharon's like, have done it. Never again. <laughs> I see we're all pessimists in this circle on the internet, are we? <laughs> you never know what uh, you could find. James is saying Michael Keaton was seen with a tape measure making sure Melanie Griffiths didn't have a bigger trailer than him. Wow. <laughs> Pragmatists. That's fair, Alex. That's fair. Look at that cloud of smog in the distance over the main city. <laughs> I think it's, it's just a black cloud. I don't think it's necessarily <laughs> smog. Uh, back then, it probably was smog. Yeah, yeah probably. Wow, it was $749,000 back then. That house recently sold for $3.5 million in real life now. That was a small moment in my life where I was driving through, I think it was St. Louis, mm -hmm. and I was seeing all these gargantuan houses that were really cheap. And I didn't quite understand how or why. And then I kept seeing all the barred up windows and looked at the murder rate of <laughs> St. Louis. Like living back in Birmingham. Pretty much, yeah. I was like, let's, huh. you let's feel, not do was, this. You feel strangely at home. Is this Steve from Blue's Clues? What is that shirt? Oh, it's rugby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why? They don't. It can't be rugby in America. The Americans don't play rugby. True. So what is that shirt? He must be the father of Steve from Blue's Clues and passed it down. It's a rugby shirt, but the Americans don't play rugby. Huh. Oh my god, child! I'd be finding a cellar to lock the child in. Uh, ooh. Okay, that, that haircut, the perm with a ponytail, is okay. maybe the most... Early 90s haircut I've ever seen. Oh, it's got Mako in it. It's a sign of quality. Yeah, Mako is the sign of quality. I would not question Mako's credit. No. Let's be honest, if anyone's going to have, like, like AAA credit, it's Mako. Yeah. Mm. Exactly, Shams like Mako, I'd rent to him. So you don't know how to work a microwave? <laughs> James is saying, I wouldn't mess with Tippy Hedron, who's uh, the mother of Melanie Griffiths, so he's, he was like he wasn't fed to lions. That is very true, yeah. Then again, Melanie survived Raw as well, didn't she? I'm I'm amazed no one died during that production. Like genuinely amazed. Were they? 
Is Swift were microwaves really a new technology in the 90s? Well, they hadn't come down to a commodity price that you can pick them up for like $50 in Walmart now sort of thing, you know? Fair, yeah. Yeah, they barely survived. Wasn't half the cast scalped by a lion during the making of so. war? Oh, Miss Swift says it's Mantis. Mantis? Mantis was one of the many 80s kind of action TV show things. Oh god, that wallpaper. Yeah, the problem is I think they just put it up. Well, they didn't put it up very well. It's peeling in that area. Yeah. There's Mako bringing his couch with him. That's what the house needed, character. We're just bringing um, all the stereotypical uh, props in for our apartment. Yep. What are they all treading on? I need to know what that letter says. That is... Uh, that is the application all filled in for the uh, black guy. Oh, that's a shame. I think wallpaper is still a thing, Sharon, but people, what people tend to do now is have just one wall painted. I wouldn't trust this guy coming to my house like this. All right, everyone. It's time. What are your What are your horror stories from like um, either renting places from bad landlords or going to like an Airbnb? Let's hear those horror stories. I can tell you one about the first house I ever rented. Oh, go on. Uh, we rented from a guy who uh, was basically drinking the rent we were paying him and not paying <laughs> his mortgage. <laughs> And we had bailiffs turn up at the door asking why the mortgage hadn't been paid. And he hadn't informed the mortgage company. Mm. As he was renting the property out. That was fun. We moved shortly after that. It's quite funny, isn't it, really, that a tenant has to pass credit checks, be vetted, etc. Mm. But landlords, for the most part, don't have to be... Um... Even decent human beings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, James is saying they never got their deposit back from the landlord. Well, that landlord, we paid him the deposit. He drank it. So what we did was we just didn't pay him the last month's rent and kept it because mm -hmm. the deposit was one month's rent. So, yeah. Uh, Hostels says, were hus terrible. Sharon says, my husband and I had a rental house that the tenant manufactured meth. Cops were involved. Oh, bloody hell. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry, I, I missed... How much is rent? 7500 a month? What? Right. <laughs> Trying to pay six months rent? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
I don't understand why they'd pay uh, six months up front. Do, for starters, do you trust they need the this cash, gentleman they? right now, Dom? No, not even remotely. When he turned up in his little Porsche, I didn't trust him. He's the ooziest, sleaziest slime ball that's ever greased its way out of a, I don't know, San Francisco deli. Exactly, James. Studios loved these psychotic thrillers in the 90s. They were cheap to make and did well at the box office. This is very much in the vein of Hammer yeah. The Cradle, that kind of thing, which we thoroughly enjoyed. Oh, my God, this apartment. Oh, this apartment, sorry, this office. This is yeah. this is adorable. It's reminding me of um, the office in Absolutely Fabulous. Just chaos everywhere with mild computer stuff. Ms. Swift saying, but 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 he's the right complexion. That That's is true. a Mac classic. Uh, Alex. Name that Mac. Oh dear. Exactly, Mr. Furzel, Mrs. Griswold, how could you? Ellen, are you smoking again? And lying for a criminal. Again. Again. Clark would not approve. Oh. Oh. See? Landlords are vile, evil bastards. <laughs> yes. <sighs> oh. Oh, yeah, that's what they all say, oh. you scumbag. <laughs> Tell me you're a racist without telling me you're a racist. What? Nice guy. Ugh. I almost had to take a shower after seeing him enter. Someone posted Cherry 2000 earlier, and I can't unsee it now either. Why is there a candelabra in the kitchen? <laughs> Why haven't you got one? Not normally. <laughs> I have to bust it out. Okay, I don't believe that. Either it's, frig either it's freezer's faulty, or that is movie prop. Because who realistically can take a pint pot of premium ice cream out of the freezer and put a spoon into it and... Get a, immediately get start, immediately, yeah. Yes. Without having to go get the uh, the chisel the and hammer. Yeah. <laughs> <and the garage. laughs> Hang on. You want some Ben and Jerry's? Sure. Bang, All right. Bang, we'll, bang, we'll leave bang. it 20 minutes to defrost slightly. Yeah. Are they looking directly into... <laughs> San Francisco, Francisco like everybody. <laughs> I like the fact that uh, those that that couple, the the white blonde haired couple, um, have basically cemented their um, their, their, their their racial stereotypes potentially. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, Mako. If I could, Mako, if I could Mako start my always, day, Mako is always welcome in a watch party. Absolutely. If I could start my day doing Tai Chi in the morning with Mako every day, yes. oh man, I'd be living my best life. I'd be at peace. <laughs> Dom has an unatmospheric kitchen. <laughs> no, I don't have a kitchen that's like a... Um, a Victorian vampire's castle, no. So I apologise, Mr. Furs. When you said Dalton, I was thinking, I don't do Tai Chi. You're referring to Dalton in um, Roadhouse. <laughs> I was thinking, I don't do a lot of Tai Chi these days. <laughs> Miss Swift saying uh, Matthew Medine's character is making Mika from Paranormal Activity look nice. He's mm -hmm. making Edward Norton from American History X look nice at the moment. <laughs> Uh, 
Tai Chi on your local PBS at 5 a.m. It's not with makeup. That's the problem. It's not with makeup. We missed out. We missed out on a uh, VHS craze. Tai Chi with Mako. I like how the lighting on him is always very sinister as well. Yeah. It's soft on almost the everyone else. Nice but on that, kind of the, cause the rain's fluttering on his face, but hers is just, yeah. Yeah. He's only just... on half his face is in the shadow. James is saying, can we have a killer elite watch party with James Kahn and Mako? Maybe one day. That's a lot of phone books. You know, you need several phone books. Oh, the Angela Lansbury workout video chains. <laughs> <laughs> you have a water fountain there as well. What is happening to your place, dude? It's it's gotten decrepit. What a water cooler. Well, no, there's this like scatter scattered junk all over the place. Yeah, but those first the candelabra. They, but in the, but in, the um, in the 80s in America, a lot of kitchens had those water coolers with bottles in them. Why? Because people didn't buy bottled water like that. They had those instead of drinking tap water. They didn't have the inline filters. Have you, ever seen, not, have you never seen Family Ties, Dom? I wasn't a Family Ties kid, no. It's family, I think Roseanne had one as well. Even Roseanne. Oh, didn't watch Roseanne either. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, I'm, I'm, I'm more of the uh, dinosaurs uh, yeah. era of I sitcom. The dino- <laughs> I think the dinosaurs had one. Sharon, <laughs> Sharon could probably confirmed to me that they were a, a big thing in the... Sort of the 80s and early 90s in American kitchens. A lot of people had them. Yeah. I like how they renovated the house, but all they really did was paint. <laughs> well, that's renovation. Oh, dear. Look at this bank. It's so atmospheric. I love it. Oh, they've got a little Garfield on the... James, I know. I don't live in America, well. but I'm lecturing Dom, who lives in America, without living in America. I know. <laughs> I know. I am a child. I, I don't know the world. Exactly. Is that a cupboard under the stairs? The eternal question from Miss Swift. Was Meg Ryan doing her best Melanie Griffiths impression? Or was Melanie Griffiths doing her best Meg Ryan Yeah, pick him out. It's too late. Yeah. James is saying, Dom, go out there and build your survivalist compound. Be the bird gummer you want to be. I live in the city, dude. <laughs> I couldn't hack it as a uh, a survivalist. Oh, wow. Ugh. You are lucky to be alive, dude. Don't just go hammering into the wall like that. <laughs> you, hang on. You just hit a wire, it's okay. Yeah, but to repair that properly, you need to I, cut... The wire. You need to cut the drywall out, mm-hmm. patch it properly... And then patch the drywall over the top. Mm-hmm. Or we'll just leave the exposed easy. wire in there. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, and now that's dangerous because that could keep arcing. Uh huh. Exactly, Alex Peacock. That's why you need a wire finder. Everyone get one if you don't have one. It's very useful. Uh, however, I found out in one of my previous houses, they don't work. 
when you have plastic water pipes in the wall. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Mm. Oof. We had a newish house with plastic water pipes in the wall, and I was putting oh, yeah. a shelf up, and I drilled straight through the plastic water pipes, <laughs> which resulted in me. But fortunately, it was American plasterboard, a.k.a. sheetrock. So I had two yeah. tin water off, cut the patch out of it, patch the pipe back together again, and then repair all the wall. That was... And now you know where the why, pipe is. That is why, earlier I said, DIY home projects that don't normally sit in my wheel <laughs> turn into <laughs> ungodly hell. It was a five-minute job of putting a shelf up. <laughs> you had to replaster the wall. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's a bit creepy. He sat in the car, smoking, passing a... Uh, razor blade between his fingertips. Razor blade. Okay, I wish whenever I left dramatically, there'd be some 90s saxophone playing. They were inside the wall, Alex, and they were coming down from the attic inside the wall. Plastic pipes. He owns some kind of sweatshop that makes kites and MC Hammer's trousers. Yeah, it's it's a 90s sweatshop. Just have jazz playing in my car stereo at all times, James. I'll I'll do that from now on. Just the Miami Vice soundtrack. Yeah, Melanie, this isn't a good look for you and your husband that you've got a group of young blonde Caucasian children <laughs> shouting, we are smarter. <laughs> Best on. Yep. <laughs> it's not a good look. Yeah, I, well, I need Kenny G Saxon. Wait, didn't Kenny G only do... Um... Clarinet? Clarinet, yeah. I thought he did, uh, but I'm not sure. James is saying, given the family, the scene should have lions rather than horses. Uh, Kenny soprano, G soprano saxophone. Act. The thing is, for most people in the UK, no one knows who Kenny G is. Pretty much, yeah. Does that mean we've been spared Kenny G? <laughs> the tyranny. The tyranny of Kenny G. Kenny G. <laughs> Why is he congratulating her on being pregnant, his partner, when he's congratulating her like, yeah, I someone else did it? I <laughs> someone else did it, or oh, you won twenty dollars on a scratch lotto card. Congratulations! Oh, nice, good for you. <laughs> That's true. We did have James Blunt. Hmm. Yeah, I hate that more than anything in the world being touched while I'm sleeping. I'm like, shut off me! Yeah, don't touch me. Take him out, Mako. Mm. Oh, that's an adorable. Does he not know know that Mako is both a ninja master and a wizard? He's trying to live quietly in uh, in San Francisco. He's retired. Call the police. Yes. He's changed the locks. Come on. Poe. Ho. Don't do anything foolish now. (laughs) 
<laughs> Small victories, eh? Small short-lived victories. Oh, lovely view of Alcatraz from the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably part of the. Uh... Oh, there's a popo. Good. Yeah, it's probably yes, part of the. Uh... But are the? Uh, do you think the police? The police are there to help the landlord. Another pair of candles there. Jeepers. That looks safe. Yeah. Yep, Miss Swift, exactly. That's illegal. Dude, you gotta calm down. It doesn't look like you can, bro. You're going ballistic at the police. I mean, I'd do the same thing, really. Police don't like me. You got a feel for landlords, they really go through it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yep, exactly, James. It's not criminal, it's a civil suit. The landlord is screwed. Yep. Why is he so happy about it? You damned cops. Yep. That's right, Mr. Furzel. I've heard this as well. Squatters can't be removed once they move in. Set fire to the apartment with him in it. Yeah, that'll work. I am amazed anyone rents out houses given those laws. Yeah. Yeah, this guy looks like he works for lawyers. Exactly, James. Don't trust that lawyer. She's a serial killer. <laughs> I want my shoes cleaned by that guy, and I didn't normally wear trainers or sneakers, as Americans call them. <laughs> Got a lot of uh, cool pizzazz when it comes to tidying up a, a dude's shoes. Ah, it's the bank. We lent you the money for the house, and now you're having financial difficulties. We're going to take it off you and profit. 
That's a bank. Yep. The real victim here is Mako. Yes. Horse Pucky? Yeah, Miss Swift, I bet it's just as difficult mm -hmm. on the other end of it if uh, a landlord puts the squeeze on you and tries yeah. to just decimate your uh, finances. Is it my imagination? Are they really in a relationship? They don't seem to like each other. I know, they really don't, do they? Mm. Oh, Alex, did they have a quota of the amount of shits they could use then? Is that Chekhov's uh, spear tip that I'm seeing? <laughs> Don't you dare. Don't, Don't you dare, cat. you monster. Don't hurt the cat. Ah, oh, he's at a Denny's. <laughs> English oh, later, a mom pants she's wearing. Oh, yeah. La Cucaracha. That's right. Oh, no. This exterminator yeah. looks too well Oof. Do you know who they could have got, though? John Goodman's exterminator. Yeah! From I'd have loved that. There's just this recurring character that just turns up in different films. Yeah. Hang on, having a having a having an argument outside the tenant who's causing you problems house about your money problems very loudly. Mm, mm. That's gonna go well. The roach sucking unit. <laughs> Hot, oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've changed my mind completely on this guy. I really like this guy as a uh, exterminator now. There's a uh, a stinger going in a bit, darling. You're going to love this bit. Don't worry. Wait oh, oh. 
Hey, all right. I'll get nice and cozy. The lawyers gave up real quick, didn't they? No, they've, uh... Well, they've put that on there. From the desert. Yeah. Saying this would never have happened to Delbert, says James. <laughs> That looks a good part of town. Yeah. Oh. Yes, I'm sure that's a reputable organisation. I mean, it's got lights flashing. That you need to get buzzed into. Oh, this place is so depressing. It is, isn't it? If if she had fifty eight hundred dollars, why would she be going to you for five grand? Yeah. Did they give me fifty eight hundred? That's Tully from Adam's family, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's where I was seeing. He's, like, oh, okay. he's also the Adam's family's accountant. Yeah, trying to stifle loads of money out of him. Yeah. Oh, it looks like you've gone foggy, Andrew. I've gone foggy. Oh no. I'm having one of them days with my tech today, aren't I? There, oh, there we you go. go. I'm back again. Yeah. Camera couldn't focus. Good old loan sharks. Yeah, James is saying they need a thug, not a loan shark. Yeah, a goon. They need to go to the... Hired goons. <laughs> yeah. Hey, my name's Paulie. I've been hired by the guys to get you out of this, this here apartment. Miss Swift says, get a payday loan, then you can pay back 20k on your 5k loan. Oh, yeah. James is saying they need Bob the Goon. Well, James, wasn't Bob the Goon the exterminator there? <laughs> Bob the Goon of Batman fame. I wish there was, well, there probably is, and I just don't know about them, but I wish there was more, like, 80s, 90s yeah. era villain Michael Keaton, because, boy, he looks twisted. Well, you need to watch that film I told you about. Yes, I do. Desperate Measures. Well, he's leaving, he's taking his bundle of clothes. Yeah, Halifino says Desperate Measures as well. Generic beer. If it's not beer brand beer, I'm not going to drink it. No. <laughs> it's the beer of champions. Yeah, it is, James. Ah. Desperate Measures is 1998. 
I think James, I'm one of the few people actually saw that at the cinema. Sharon, that looks some good beer. Mm. There's a little rainbow in the distance. Amongst the cloudy sky. Yas Mako. Mm. Yes, James, I was statistically a significant part of the box office for desperate measures. Yeah, I don't recall the screening being, being very busy. Uh, Mad Matt says rainbows mean leprechauns are near. That's true, yeah. <laughs> good leprechauns or bad leprechauns? No such thing as a good leprechaun. They're all evil. That judge has got the world's biggest glasses ever. He does. Don't alienate the Irish audience. I have the. Mm. I, I, I just feel sorry for Mako. Mako yes. is my hero in this film. Uh, uh, everyone else is... Yeah. The, the cameraman is really trying here, and I appreciate this. You see, his end goal is, it's basically the end goal of this is um, short circuit too. There's a bank vault across the road and he's tunnelling into it. <laughs> he's going to get a local friendly camp robot to help him. Input. So he's stripped his Porsche. Mm-hmm. Jesus! Dude! You almost hit your girl! Did he just throw a piece of wood at his pregnant girlfriend? That's what I thought! James, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> I quite like some of the shots and stuff in this film. That through the window is quite nice. Yeah, there's a lot of good camera work in this film. Lots of nice transitions. The soundtrack as well. Like I said, Hans Zimmer poured all of his uh, creativity into this film. Yeah. And then just lost it. it just got... Uh, samey, I suppose. He found the formula that worked and stuck at it. Exactly, Mr. Fizzle. Funny how much a person can mess up people's lives just by existing. I 
I miss artsy dream sequences like this. Yes. Is this his wife? Well, girlfriend, girlfriend, sorry. So no, it's just like a lightsaber then. Yeah. Are we about to go Lost Boysy? Yep, exactly, hell if I know. Keaton's only been in this film for like five minutes so far, but using him sparingly is working well. Because every yeah. time he's on the screen, he's causing trouble. Yeah. Just a despicable scumbag. Mm. But his goal isn't clear. Yeah. It's the mystery of why is he doing what he's doing. You have a candle. Right? No. Mm. I want to put my face on that grout, though. No, definitely not. Oh, didn't look good. Appears so, Mr. Verzel. <clears throat> Sharon saying, if we look back to, at early 90s, wouldn't it have been easy to get tenants out by not paying rent? Tenants have rights as long as they are paying rent. If you don't pay, you don't get to stay. Maybe the California laws are slightly different. I don't know. I suppose in America, it's different in the UK because we've got, like, we don't have particularly regional law except within um, Scotland and Wales. In England, we do have separate laws for certain things. But um, largely they're the same. Why yeah, didn't Swift, he clean it's definitely that up when, odd. We're not being funny. If he was home first, why didn't he clean that up instead of subjecting it to that? <laughs> well, I'm going to make myself here's a cup the of thing. coffee. Based on his dream sequence, we can establish a few things about his mental state. He he feels impotent in many regards. He can't uh, get this tenant out. He feels powerless. He feels that uh, his wife slash girlfriend is looking at him as less of a man. She may be swayed by a more masculine figure, his his triumphant counterpart. So he can't clean up the mess because he doesn't know how to. Oh. Or I'm reading too much into it. <laughs> oh, look at this. That countertop keeps getting worse and worse each time I look it at it. You did. <laughs> Cleaning is the word. James. <laughs> All right, love, welcome back. I've made myself a brew, which was your job, by the way. Now clean up your bloody mess from last night. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... No. Yeah. Nothing would get me on Michael Keaton's side more than that dude saying yeah. that. <laughs> James is saying, I expect you to say that you've called a... You've hired a goon to sort this out. <laughs> I want to oh. strangle you. Also, I hope that cat's nowhere near there. Because of those flowers? They're lilies. Are they... Lil lilies yeah. are toxic to cats. That's what I thought. When I had a cat, we ensured whenever we had flowers in the house, there were no lilies there. Mm. <sighs> There's a quote quote from uh, Batman Returns a couple of years later that plays for Keaton's character in this. He's playing them like a harp from hell. He 
he is so screwed. Well, it's not just that. He's playing them perfectly, isn't he? He's getting them exactly. Oh, yeah. I was thinking Drake is screwed. Like, totally screwed. And now I'm yeah. seeing exactly a repeat of what happened at the beginning of this film. Because the police got there surprisingly fast. Yeah. Well, he framed the narrative with the police mm-hmm. on the phone and then made the made made it happen. Yep. No. <laughs> Can you arrest me, please? Exactly, Alex. He called the police before he went upstairs. Do you know what? This one's pacing is excellent. We're an hour into it. Oh, really? Bloody hell. Yeah. It it moves at a good speed. It's it's not fast, but it's consistent. I was going to say, like, you're not a criminal law specialist. Yeah, he's a criminal law specialist, not uh, not an eviction specialist. He failed miserably. Is it weird that this is, like, more horrifying than a lot of the horror films we've watched? It because is, it's so... It? This is closer torture. to reality. It is, it is. Yeah. And as an adult who has things like rent to pay and <laughs> stuff like that, this is the most horrifying yeah. like situation. Of course. Ah, oh, it hurts. He's a pro, isn't he, at this? Oh, God. It's a pull-out sofa bed like that. I slept on one a couple of years ago, and I've not ha- never had a worse night's sleep, because that mattress... Your back hasn't recovered as- still. <laughs> that mattress may as well be a sheet of paper. Yeah. Yeah. Those mattresses are terrible. Yes. I had a night on one of them when we were in a hotel and honestly oh. Exactly, Miss Swift, that's brilliant. A supernatural threat often has a weakness or a silver bullet. The system, the law, and bureaucracy are eternal and unstoppable. I mean, he is just turning the screws, turning it up the pressure bit by bit by bit. What makes matters worse is that I know there are people like this. Yes. James is saying, not true, you can hire a goon. <laughs> You need cash for that. She needs that five thousand dollars. Yeah. If only she had fifty eight hundred, she'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, if she had the fifty eight hundred, she could borrow the five thousand she needs. It sounds so stupid. Like... <laughs> in real life, Melanie would get her mother and the big cats around. Yeah. Oh, and he's been in her apartment. (laughs) How can you be smiling and laughing? The girl is still like in the apartment with that monster. The music then was almost tubular bells in parts. Yeah. Melanie, get out of there. 
Lads not out, exactly. The, the lads are just living it up, like having a cooking blast. Steak. They're having a great time. Yeah. Go stay with the lads. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Get out of there. Oh, that's a nice shot. Yeah. That's one thing about San Francisco. It's a very cinematic Vertical. city. Oh, yeah. Very kind of photogenic place, and that house is kind of. Oof. These shots. It's really nicely mm. done. It is. It really is. You smashed your little house. Sharon, I think James is going to have a suggestion of who they could use for your... Sharon says, they need to stop relying on the law to help them out. When you're teamed up with, against someone who doesn't play by the rules, you might have to as well. They should stop playing by the, the victor and turn the screws to Carter. Well, James has got an idea who they could use. Hire a goon. <laughs> Hire a goon. <laughs> The problem is, when you've been playing by the law's rules for so long, meeting a, you know, a trained and battle-hardened crook, they know the tricks way better than you do. Yeah. So going into the mud, they fight better. That's why you need to hire a goon. Well, he's suggesting you hire the A-team. But I don't... The A-team were in Los Angeles. They're in, he's in San Francisco. So I don't know if they'd have to pay an out-of-hours kind of coverage fee for the A-team. Yeah, yeah. Like an out-of-area charge. Ah, oh, look at that. James is saying call Michael Matt. <sighs> on turbo boost through the apartment <laughs> call any 80s television like call auto man screw it call anyone auto man yeah <laughs> airwolf Manimal. whoever just get anyone animal animal <laughs> yeah james is saying send michael knight uh, send for airwolf i think man this is this is under manimal's remit because manimal could turn into a panther and scare the other guy out the apartment <laughs> Turn into a lion and give Melanie Griffith flashbacks. <laughs> Mr. Singh, the nightmare. Are they? Yeah. All right, my new favourite character is the dude who's just <laughs> sat on the staircase. Gen James Ellie says, if Manimal turned into a panther, it would end with Melanie Griffith's mother in custody. <laughs> oh, I love the fact they've sent they've sent um, Ted's father, Officer Logan, to do the eviction. Yes. If this, He's a really like, bad locksmith. If the only way you can get through that lock is by drilling Drill. It. If the locksmith's name isn't Pauly or something along those lines, I'm going to be insulted. He has strong Pauly energy. <laughs> just the tuna can just opened.
They took the television. No, they even took the electrical sockets from the wall. Yeah. Here we go, Dom. Uh, I told you about a stinger. Uh-huh, you did, yeah. And I forgot about it until this point. It's a cop. <laughs> he was honest. Mm hmm. Sharon saying, don't you wish you'd said yes to him? <laughs> if I was there, I'd be saying to him, are you interested in the apartment now? It might be a bit of work. Just please stay with us. We need a cop on property. <laughs> Sharon saying, Alex Peacock saying, the cop uh, should have been smart enough to put the application in the person's hands. And uh, Sharon says, tip for any new landlords, if a cop wants to rent to you, say yes. <laughs> okay, the jeans have somehow become even more mum. They are proper mum jeans, aren't They're they? They're like 40% more mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Him. Now I'm just uh, a simple out of space space chicken. <laughs> <laughs> he is deep throat, James. He was also Samuel Clements in um, Star Trek: The Next Generation. Those chairs. Yep. I do think Deep, Deep Throat was bloody useless in the X-Files, though. Like, every time Mulder got close to anything, he was just like, well, I, I can't tell you anymore, Mulder. Just know that you're doing the, the Lord's work. It's just like, just out with it, man. Oh, a bit of a montage now, investigation montage. Yeah. The score is great, because the score isn't beholden to one style at all. No, it blends so many styles together, and it's very well done. Yeah. Now we're seeing the uh, mansion or apartment from the beginning of the movie. Yeah, James, I know that he was a bad guy, pretending to be good. I'm aware. I didn't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen The X-Files. It's a great show, up until season seven. <laughs> exactly. Calbot, just say these <laughs> three times and you'll pop out the module. Yeah, perfect. That's how you get them. There you go. Mm -hmm. I 
What I'm seeing here is that her boyfriend was essentially completely bloody useless. All he did was make things worse for everyone. And once he's out of the picture, Melanie yeah. here starts flourishing and getting shit done. James is saying this would never have happened if they just had some thugs to drop him off the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> just hire a couple of goons. Yeah. Got you a pair of cement shoes. Ah, oh, no dish protection laws. Right? They're called like Victor over and um Victor Unger over done. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't remember Airplane. the other guy's name. Yeah. Under over over done. Oh, it's Roger. Where are you? Have you been having a montage hunting down our uh, creepy man? I told you, no montages. Oh, I wonder what those prescription bottles were. Oh, wow, that's very uh, Bruce Wayne looking there with the glasses. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. God, Drake was absolutely useless. He was genuinely a burden. Mm -hmm. Melon should go find um, Bruce Willis and start up a moonlighting service. Ah. This is more LA. Oh, she is now. she's in LA, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> well, she's in California, isn't she? I mean, how far is San Francisco from LA? But I'm assuming that she's got a higher car as well, though. She's doing that. It's, a, it's a drive. <laughs> okay, it's he's now... Down one that, road, though. That's almost the Playboy Mansion he's at now. Right. It does look like Beverly Hills, hell if I know. Which means not far from here is where they're shooting raw. <laughs> I'm 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 still like furious about how much Drake screwed everything over. What the husband? Yes. Even yeah. The fact he, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. She could be Axel Foley at any moment. <laughs> yeah. Alex is saying Axel Foley's squatting in a few, you know, and they're trying to evict Axel Foley. Is that one of the Golden Girls? <laughs> Rue, something like that, I don't think so. That's a very wealthy family, driven, driven around in a classic Mercedes uh, limo. They look like yeah, a I... funeral. Yeah, a little bit. To Absolutely. Honest, I, think, I think she yeah. should just leave Drake as well. Yeah, yeah, because he's crap. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You 
got good eyes, Melanie. <laughs> you managed it's to see bionic, this. What bionic eyes? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now he's acting like Bruce Wayne. This, this is how Bruce acts outside of the Batman movies when he vacations away from Gotham. He just he's just a dick. He just squats in people's houses and fucks up their lives. Okay. It's how he gets his kicks. Ah, <laughs> uh, no proof of identity needed. This is way easier to do in the 90s, I imagine, than yes. now. Because now they just wouldn't care <laughs> if you're their child. They'd be like, do you have ID? Yeah, just yoink. Break it open. That's right. Nine oh two one oh proper Beverly Hills uh, zip code for her. <laughs> she married Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> I really wish she had a folder saying evil plan. Pretty much. Evil plans and schemes. Ah. <sighs> oh, look at that. He's even got all ID in her husband's name. Yeah. Identity th theft. Yeah. That's fine. You're you're rid now of two terrible humans. It's fine. Yes. Or stop defending what if Drake. The game is that Drake and him are going to run off together into the sunset. Maybe. No, I found out my husband's cheating on me. Yes. Nosy, nosy cleaning lady. Do you think you can manage it just a bit? Can you be useful for half a second? Or are you going to find an interesting and fun way to mess this up as well? The sequel movie, says James, would be called The Two Drakes and be about the honeymoon, honeymoon in Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Just bleed him dry. Yep. Uh, James is saying the film would also be called Drake and Drake Together Forever after lots of mistaken identity. <laughs> yeah. Jack Nicholson and Michael Keaton.
the traveler's checks by the looks of it. Melanie, you deserve so much better than these these horrible, horrible people. You are awesome. Melanie is doing the work of the film. She's the hero of the film. She is by far the hero of the film. It's like it's ten minutes without her ball and chain dragging her down, and she mm. solved the whole thing. Got a great revenge strategy and is doing it all like yeah. perfectly. He's doing nothing. He just sat in the apartment. Yeah, nursing his <laughs> beer branded beer. God, uh, you are awesome. <laughs> Why is the movie just about you? <laughs> okay, time to go. Yep, take his money. She is Miss and the chocolates. She's the MVP. Yep, Mad Max saying girl power. Melanie Griffiths is the MVP of this film. Mm -hmm. Oh, and she's honourable too, look, see? Yep, going to give it to the, uh, yep. To the maid as a tip. Maybe not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thinking. Yeah, I've got to replace the dishwasher, the walls, the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Yeah, inside the, the, the elevator's panic pushing the button. I'd love it if right now you just saw the bat, like the, the bat, the bat yeah. sprang come through. <laughs> God, that threw his momentum off, didn't it? Nuts! <laughs> Let's get nuts! <laughs> Come on! Oh, I want that. That's the Keith energy I want right now. Punch him! Punch him! Get nuts. You've got to... <laughs> what is that helmet? That's assault! That's assault! Get him! Police, where are you? <laughs> Damage property. Well, property damage, even. Jaywalking, at least. Come on. <laughs> that is... Yes, James. Jack Nicholson should turn up as a hired goon. And Danny DeVito to bite someone's nose off. Yes. Come on, come up and give us that sweet, sweet, succulent yeah. fruit of revenge. Ah, you slime ball. Exactly, Miss Swift. Sick the lions on him. <laughs> I don't know why this villain in particular is like 
grinding my gears more so than yeah. others we've seen in the past. I, I think it is purely because it's so close to home. Like we, we've experienced people like this. this. Is, but this is another of the trend of as we were talking about in the nineties of I of horror films. But it's a it's not a gory. It's psychological kind of just. It's a different kind of horror. Yeah, very much. But this is at the start of the nineties. Oh, you useless sack of bloody filth. Yep. Don't you dare start buying six-piece faux pony desk sets. <laughs> I'm siding with the landlord's girlfriend. I'm not siding with the landlord. The Drake okay. is far from my hero. I hate him. I want to see him burn. Huh. Look at him. He's taken aback by the six-piece faux pony desk set. Absolute worst person in this film. It's a lot of westerns on TV there. I know. Exactly, he's on some good painkillers. He's wrapped oh, up he's... very, very warm. Cozy little blanket. This is the white noise he goes to sleep to. Yeah, exactly. James, I've got some good news for everyone watching. You're all not getting that cow leather desk set. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Call now and you get three for the price of one. Yeah. That's okay, Sharon. You're all not getting one. If you all look under your chair, <laughs> <laughs> you won't find one. <laughs> that would be that would be the ultimate creepy thing for me to do if I said, "Everybody, now look under your chair." <laughs> and to stash something under their chair. It'd be even worse if they're watching this like after the live uh, <laughs> events. <laughs> Watch the <laughs> run. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> Are we going to get a cat jump scare? <laughs> a pigeon jump scare? Dove. Being chased by the cat. Hang on, that wasn't the same cat. Yeah, it was a different cat. <laughs> the cat that, meow, that kind of screamed in the close-up was a different cat. And no one good was in was harmed. The yeah. end. <laughs> exactly. There we go. Now they just need... You deserve it, mate. And to take each other out. And then he yeah. just goes on to a better life. Exactly. Actually, now I'll get this black and white television absolutely free. <laughs> Wow, she's elevated her mum trousers again. How do they keep getting more mum? Oh, it's, it's well shot and well angled with the light and the and everything, making him look a lot more imposing. Because Keaton's oh, yeah. a, a huge man. Mm-hmm. Well, I've noticed that as we've been watching him, it's always been shot from above. Yeah. So it's making him look sinister, but harmless. Now the camera's lower. Ooh. Drake, you have one. You have one chance to do something remotely useful. Drake didn't call the cops, though, of course. No, of course, because why would you? Yeah. Ugh. 
Oof. I can't remember Married to the Bump very well, Miss Swift. I'm not sure if Matthew Medine did save it. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, that's true, James. The cops would have automatically arrested Drake by default. <laughs> Bleeding on the floor, completely yeah. high on painkillers. <sighs> oh. Chekhov's nail gun. He decided the best fight was to go under the frickin' floor, oh my god, you suck! You suck! <sighs> Those pipes look dangerous. Oh! You see, this, most... is Carter's, this is Carter's own fault because he didn't cap those pipes with a plastic thing at the end for safety reasons. I think it still would have really hurt if you landed on those plastic it covers. Wouldn't, it wouldn't have gone through him, though. You don't know that. He might, he might have at least done severe damage, yeah. broken a Ms. couple says, of ribs. Irony or coppery? <laughs> <laughs> Oof. So Drake was somewhat of a bother to the villain at the end of the piece. You didn't redeem the yourself, is, I don't bro. know if anyone here has ever seen the film Mr. Mom, also starring Michael Keaton. There's a dream <laughs> sequence where he's shot and he's rolling around on the floor doing basically the same thing. <laughs> What is this Giga Chad in the suit and the, the almost mullet? We only had a uh, one tenant who we murdered. Bro, if you're walking around in a suit like that with like the sleaziest 80s mullet ever known to man. You can't talk about money like you don't have it pouring out of your every pore you have. You didn't have a you didn't have a problem with any murder with any uh, tenants who you fought to the death. <laughs> I think this would be best ended by the fact they're selling and they go separate ways. Yeah. Alex, because she's not renting to the cop because they're selling the whole house. Yeah. Oh, and they're going to make they're going to make hundred a profit thousand profit potentially. I think it'd be great if they became like horrific tenants because of their previous uh, yeah. encounter. And they're like, don't trust these new people. They're singing a ballad. Those two hipsters are, are singing a ballad of the, uh, the previous uh, tale. But anyway, that was Pacific Heights. Let's take your comments. Dom will go first. What do you think of that? Oh man, that gave me a like, heart palpitations watching it G going from raw fury towards one person and then the exact same fury towards someone else I, d I feel sorry for Mako yes I feel sorry for Mako yes. Mako he can he can I'll, I'll rent to him anytime yeah you can stay at my place rent free buddy just, yeah. just do Tai Chi with me in the morning so we we'll call it cold yeah. good good thriller then Don very good thriller yeah I really enjoyed this Glad you enjoyed it. Let's see what uh, the uh, community says. So over on Discord, uh, Mr. Fersel, this was a good thriller with a realistic villain and a realistic ending. Um, Calvot saying, meanwhile, on another roof. Um, it's basically the, the room. Mad Matt says, I wish <laughs> someone owes me back rent. Alex, Peacock's, Alex Peacock, really quite good. Ms. Swift, 
Great cinematography to mask my visceral fury at Drake. Uh, he sucks. Yeah. I really enjoy that film. It's, uh, it's yeah, very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Shanta's v- fun watch party. So I'll take any more qu- comments off anyone. Right. One doing that, let's say what we're doing next week. We're going to take a break from horror, thrillers, and whatever. We're going to have a bit of sci-fi fun next week. Calbot says this was a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of fun next week. We're going to be watching a film we've had quite a lot of requests for. Alien Nation. Next Hell week. yeah. Hell yeah. A buddy cop with a buddy cop movie with aliens. So that's going to be prepare your soured milk, people. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've put mine in the airing cupboard ready. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, James is happy it will be Alien Nation. So, uh, the series, I'll right? All. <laughs> yeah, the whole series. No, we're watching the, uh, the movie. So, we've got a lot of great people in that. James Khan and Mandy <laughs> together at last. Anyway, we will be back in seven days. Be kind to each other. Stay safe. Don't let any strange tenants into your rental properties look after each other and we will see you then so until then good night everybody good night